the mass intentions for the 22nd of June are for all our benefactors, living and dead, for Pope Francis, our bishops and priests, for our sister Cecil, and all those recommended to our prayers, especially the sick and the dying, for the repose of the souls of Avelino Tibudan Sr. and Romeo Montajes, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Together with the intentions already announced, we pray for ourselves in this Mass. That the continuous presence of God will be with us. Today, the Holy Mother Church celebrates the optional memorial of St. Thomas More and John Fisher, martyrs. We pray through their intercession for the grace we need to keep struggling in this our journey of faith. I invite you to present your own personal petition to God our Father for this Mass. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries widely, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to, my, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to <coughs> everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, Graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of St. John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of life and faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Kings. In those days, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan, the secretary, came to the king and reported to the king. 
Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan the secretary told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great, and he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his covenants and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep them to the end. Grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Guide me in the path of your commands, for in them is my delight. Bend my heart to your decrees and not to wrongful gain. Turn my eyes from gazing on vanities. In your way, give me life. Lord, teach me the way of your See, I long for your precepts. Give me life by your justice. Lord, teach me the way of your Alleluia. Alleluia. Abide in me and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are graves gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? So, every sound tree bears good fruits, but a bad tree bears evil fruits. A sun tree cannot bear evil fruits, nor can a bad tree bear good fruits. 
every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. The response to the psalm of today, Psalm of David, Psalm 119, but response comes from verse number 33. Lord, teach me the way of your status. This touched me today. The psalm is Praise that the Lord should teach him his status. And I want to challenge each of us here today to please return to this psalm today. Because it contains prayer that a sincere Christian should pray. Lord, teach me the way of your status and I will keep them to the end. The psalmist knows that. It is the Lord who teaches, and it is through and by the status of the Lord we can endure. And that's why he prays, say, Lord, teach me your status, and I will keep them to the end. And his prayer continues, say, grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. You see, the engagement of the psalm here is that we need to learn from the Lord. And Jesus calls us to learn from him. He said, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Who are those who can overcome this world? They are simply people who have learned from Jesus. It is a call on daily basis for us to make effort to learn from Jesus. And the reason is becoming more obvious. In our own time today, there is confusion everywhere. There are voices sounding from here and there. People are being confused. And so you hear Jesus in the gospel reading of today saying, beware of false prophets. They come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wolves, tearing, devouring worlds. They are everywhere, speaking and sounding, claiming to be Jesus. I want to believe that you are aware of a prophet here in South Africa who told his disciples that he had gone to heaven and took a selfie. And people were coming to watch, paying money to watch. Some time ago, a prophet in Nigeria told his disciple that he has gotten a direct phone number to heaven. You can just call and get what you want. And people were coming to pay to receive the number to heaven. This, you know, uh, deception everywhere. You don't know who to trust again. I mean, our world is seriously heading to doom. Politically, there are confusions. Religiously, there are confusion. Confusion everywhere. We need to learn from Jesus so that we keep focus. Otherwise, we will be thrown out of place. And that's why the prayer of the psalmist today is very important. In the early 1990s, in early 1900s, you hear of prosperity preachers. They started preaching, oh, my God is not God of poverty. My God is God of prosperity. And they started preaching. They made many believers think that if you are not rich, then you are not a Christian. The same thing that happened in the Jewish time of Jesus. When if you are sick, people will think you have sinned. You remember the story of a man who was born blind? And they came to Jesus and said, Whose sin made him blind? Is it that of his fathers or his mother or himself? 
You know why? Because they believe if there is sickness, poverty, pain, sorrow, then that individual has sinned. That means God is not with that person. If you follow that, it means that Jesus lived in heaven to come and die. That means God put a curse on Jesus. But we are told that through the death of Jesus, he took away our curse. He took away our curse. He brought life to us. So prosperity teachers, we start teaching people, no, if you are poor, something is wrong with you. Your Christianity is not genuine. And therefore, prosperity becomes a measure of spirituality. Falsehood, deception. Now you have um, a false prophetism springing everywhere in our world today, even in Catholic Church. So you don't know who to believe, you don't know who to trust. We need to learn from Jesus. Jesus says, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. In the first reading of today, we are told, we are shown how we can learn from Jesus. It is through daily meditations on the word of God. The king saw that the word of the law is rich. He called for the word to be read to the hearing of the people. And then to go into introspection, to inquire from the Lord what the world teaches, what the world would want his people do. That was how they overcame in their own time. So we need to return to daily meditation, to daily prayer, learning from Jesus. This is where strength comes. This is where joy comes. This is where hope comes. As we continue in this Mass, we pray for all false prophets in our world. May they repent. We pray for all deceivers in the name of Jesus who carry Bible and deceiving people who teach wrong messages. May they repent. And we pray for people who have become spiritually myopic, who don't even know their right from their left. Because the reason why people have been deceived is because they don't know the truth. And this is why in Catholic Church, we must return to catechesis. We must teach people the right thing. When people don't know the right thing, they will be carried away. So we pray for those who are myopic, who are naive in this mass, that God may open their eyes to learn from the church and to know their faith. Peace be with you. Lord, in this Mass, we continue in our prayers for this noble community of yours. Healing comes from you, wholeness comes from you. And without you, nothing is possible. So I pray for total sanitization of this community with your spiritual force and power and the sanity. Bring sanitization. Take away everything that is not of you. Bring healing of mind and body to your children. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to the Lord Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the Holy Martyrs Thomas More and Fisher and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, totally right and just our duty and our salvation always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give order to their faith, to their endurance, grant fame resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end, we acclaim. Oh. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the 
and Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving things that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, pray throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, and Sylvester, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Sister Catherine and Sister Grace, and all who have died from this world, you took them to yourself, grant that they who were united with your son in a death like this may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Thomas More and Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be his eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. Therefore, we have the confidence to approach him as we pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation or deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. See how rich in the saints reward from God. They died for Christ and will live forever. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy matters have wonderfully made known the mysteries of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Grant this through Christ 
our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.